In this video, we're going to look at how you use a matrix inverse to solve a system of linear equations that has as many letters, x, y, and z in this case, as equations 1, 2, 3. So when we're doing this, there's a little bit of a background to what we need to build towards in finding the inverse of the coefficient matrix first. I did that on a previous video, and I'll put the link to that in the description so that you can see where you could go to actually get the process to find the inverse of the matrix. Um, we just don't have enough space on the board to be able to do that all at once in this video. So first of all, when I'm looking at the inverse method, if they ask you to do a specific method to solve a system of equations, you want to make sure that you set up the process right and then also show your steps to the solution so that you verify that you use the method that was requested. Um, with the inverse matrix method, basically what we're saying is if we have a matrix equation, the coefficient matrix A times the variable matrix X is equal to the coefficient matrix B, then I can think of this almost like I did when I was solving a very simple algebra equations with numbers and just one variable. If I had something like 2x is equal to 12, then to solve for x, I could multiply both sides by the multiplicative inverse of the coefficient 2. So the multiplicative inverse of 2 is 1 half. So I could multiply both sides by 1 half. So that 1 half times 2 is 1, and 1 times x would be x, is equal to, then 1 half times 12 would be 6, and we would get x equals 6. Well, that's what I would do if I had numbers. If I have a coefficient matrix A times a variable matrix x is equal to a constant matrix B, when I have that my coefficient matrix is a square matrix, and I go through the process to see if it has a multiplicative inverse. If it does have that multiplicative inverse and I can um, then find that multiplicative inverse, I'll multiply the inverse of A to both sides of the equation. And then looking at this, when I multiply the inverse of A times A itself, well the whole property of the multiplicative inverse is that if you multiply the multiplicative inverse of a matrix times the original matrix, you get the identity matrix. And the identity matrix, depending on the dimension, is ones down the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And the property is that the identity matrix times whatever you multiply it to just gives you what you multiply it to. So I times X would just be the matrix X is equal to my A inverse times B. So basically it's saying if I have a coefficient matrix times a variable matrix is equal to the constant matrix and I can find the inverse of the coefficient matrix, then I can solve for my variables by taking the multiplicative inverse of the coefficient matrix times the constant matrix. And when I get that product, I'll have my answers for x, y, and z, or whatever letters you have in your problem. So let's take this specifically to this problem. The coefficient matrix here, we can identify as soon as we see all the x's are lined up, the y's, the z's, the equals, and the numbers. My coefficients from in front of the letters are 2, a coefficient of 1 in front of my y, a coefficient of negative 1 in front of my z. Then second row, I have a coefficient of 2, a coefficient of 2, a coefficient of negative 1, and then a coefficient of negative 1, a coefficient of negative 1, and a coefficient of 1. So that's what corresponds to the matrix A over here. Now my variable matrix, remember when you are looking at can you multiply matrices, the dimensions of the left matrix, well this is a 3 by 3. What I multiply to, this inside number has to match. So since this is a 3, this next one has to be a 3 so that they match. And then by, and 
when I look at what the column is, it depends on what I have for that particular setting. So here it's just the variable matrix so that if I did the multiplication out, I would get 2x plus y minus c for my first entry, and then I would get 2x plus 2x to y minus c for my second entry. So this is by one, by one column. And then I would get my minus 1x minus y plus z for my third entry. So it's a three rows, one column. Three rows, one column there. So it's going to be x and then y for your second row and z for your third row. And then my equal sign. And when I multiply a 3 by 3 times a 3 by 1, I get a matrix that's a 3 by 1. The outside numbers are the dimension of your answer. So this right side will have three rows, one column. So it will just be the numbers 4, negative 3, and 7. Okay, so that's the setup. Now we want to find the inverse of this matrix. So for my matrix A, being the 2, 1, negative 1, 2, 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1, the inverse to A, and again, it's on a previous video, or you can actually like look at that by going through the process again. It's 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 1, 0, and then 0, 1, 2. So what we're going to do then is we're going to take that A inverse, we're going to take that A inverse, and we actually multiply it to both sides. But I'm not going to actually write out all of the work on the left-hand side because what happens is A inverse times A will be the identity, the identity times X will just be X. So when I multiply this inverse to both sides, this left side collapses to just the matrix X, Y, Z. And I get the right side by multiplying my inverse times B. Now remember, multiplication of matrices is not commutative. You have to put the multiplication in the order that it can be multiplied and you get the right answer for the process. So your inverse matrix times the constant matrix. So our inverse matrix is 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2. And our constant matrix is 4, negative 3, 7. Now when I carry out this multiplication, let's write this up here. I have our x, y, z is equal to... Well, a 3 by 3 times a 3 by 1, the inside numbers match, and it's a 3 by 1. So it has three rows and one column. Also, when we multiply the matrices, the element in the first row, first column, I get by multiplying the first row times the first column. And remember, you put your left hand at the beginning of the row and your right hand at the top of the column, and you multiply plus move both hands, multiply plus move both hands. So this will be 1 times 4 is 4, plus 0 times negative 3 is 0, plus 1 times 7. So I'll have 4 plus 0 plus 7 is 11. Then for the second row first column, I take the second row times the first column, start at the beginning of the row, the top of the column. So when you multiply, that's negative 4 plus negative 3 plus 0. So negative 4 plus negative 3 plus 0 is negative 7. And then the bottom row, the third row first column, by third row times the first column. So 0 times 4 is 0. So I have 0 plus negative 3 plus 14 is 11. Now back when we also talked about equality of matrices, two matrices are equal if they have the same dimension and their corresponding entries are equal. So our matrix on our left of our equal sign is a 3 by 1. The matrix on the right of the equal sign is a 3 by 1. Their dimensions match. And 
their corresponding entries have to be equal. So x has to equal 11, y has to equal negative 7, and z has to equal 11. So those are my values for x, y, and z that solve this system of linear equations. So I could also write it as an ordered triple. My x value is 11, my y value is negative 7, and my z value is 11.